Hello survivors and welcome to another episode of The Road and this is a podcast collaboration series between the content creators here in RTS where we're going to try and get as many people involved in the future as we can. That includes influential people within the community, hopefully Scopefully themselves. We'll see if Scopefully want to be involved in the future. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. Now on your screen you're seeing polls and a highlighted comment from the last episode which was over on Invisinerd's channel. If you want to go and check out that video and all the other episodes that have featured so far, you can see in the top right hand corner is a link to the playlist on my channel which features all of the episodes in the past and will feature all the episodes in the future as well. But I'll go through the polls. The first question asked, do you like Arena's impact on league standing? And it looks like 52% of people thought it was too much or 40% like it. So it's either just about right or maybe just too much. Definitely shouldn't have a big impact. Although some people think it should. It's a very small amount, 8%. Well, look at the next poll. It said, which league store improvement did you like the best? And this was from our examples. And it looks like most people wanted more tokens as event rewards. And I think that's what I'd like as well, if I'm honest. I would want to have the choice of where to spend my league tokens, what to spend them on. We definitely need more, but just because we have to spend so much more now. And the last poll was about the potential of S classes being in the league store, how you guys thought they should feature, what was the priority. 29% thought there should be a new league store exclusive S class, but 66% thought the choice box with collectibles in it was a must for the upcoming seasons. We'll have to wait and see if that's the case, but I would definitely agree there. Here's a highlighted comment as well from Donkey Puncher. Goes on to say, the supply depot needs to refresh daily, same as the other depots instead of one week. Survival road cans are long overdue to be depot item, either in league store or where they rightfully should be as survival markers. Great episode. Always look forward to hearing your guys' ideas. Keep on surviving. So I 100% agree that SR cans should be in the SR depot. Just makes 100% sense. So yeah, there is definitely some things that need refreshing. And this is an ongoing battle. This is always an ongoing battle. They're always playing catch up. But with the release of S-Class characters, catch up is pretty much everywhere right now. Definitely need to get going in some parts of it. They've done the armory. What's next? But we'll get back to this episode of The Road, and this is episode 8. And in this episode, I am joined by Link. Hey everyone, I'm happy to be here. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about, obviously, the armory. Uh, so first off, I want to get your feelings, Link. Just your general feelings on when it was introduced. What did you think about the timing of the introduction of the armory upgrade? Do you think it was well-timed? Do you think it was needed? And sort of like the quality of life updates in the inventory, you know, the overall feeling of just the mm -hmm. update itself. I personally think it was overwhelming. It's one of the reasons why I haven't really touched base on it a lot because I don't feel like I'm an expert on it myself. So I don't want to be giving other people bad advice on something that I'm not completely sure of. Um, I think that it came into the game a little too fast based on the number of new effects that we got and I feel like it could have been introduced a little slower. So they could have done like a flow of introduction like that we've got some new tier four third slot updates in there. They could have done that first and then like a couple of months later done the next stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Absolutely, especially because um, the armory tokens that are needed to make that new slot three fourth tier, um, you need to use like 2,000 or 4,000 of them and you need to use those for the five star weapons as well. I just feel like it would have been a nice introduction to kind of bringing in something new without completely changing it. And giving us a chance to get a bit of a bank of uh, armory tokens and maybe even try trying to implement something that gives us armory tokens on a reasonable basis, which is something we've, we're gonna to touch on a lot because armory tokens are just always a problem. So I'll put this question to the viewers. Check the poll in the top right hand corner. What do you think about the implementation of the armory? Do you think the armory update was needed? If you wanna go into further detail, please leave some comments down below. So moving on, we'll talk about the new tier four third slot update. What of those upgrades do you think stand out to you? Which ones did you see and go, that is nice? Because obviously you can look over them quite easily now in the research panel. You don't have to go to these screenshots on line chat or anything. Everything is in game. I think that alone is a really great update. But when you look at these upgrades, which one sort of stood out to you as one that would fit into your game style? Well, considering I have a S-Class Priya, the crit double attack blue weapon, the tough weapon, stands out by far at 175% damage with additional crit 
for the attacks after that. That just screams destruction to me. Um, I also really liked the splash damage one for 120%. Uh, the stun focus one, which is the red gun. So with that stun focus, to me it just seems like you don't need to mod against confuse or taunt anymore. You just have to focus on the other things like burn, bleed, maim, and so on. So there's just a couple of them there that I really enjoy. I've seen a few elusive impair weapons on the new S-Class Frost Human Shield, and I just found him to be very tanky, especially with that weapon. And if he rushes, he revives a teammate. Yeah, definitely some nice combos with even characters that already existed at S-Class. The ones that stood out to me in terms of just ones that I was just like, yes, I need these, I need these ones instantly. The focus stun, I liked a lot. I think I can agree with all the ones you said, but the healing stun on attack for the strong characters, I kind of like the idea of a character being given like a bonus of self-sustain where they can heal themselves. And that just sort of plays into my, I, I used to love using strong characters a lot, mainly because of the stun on attack. You had a lot of control potential. Before mods came into the game, that was great, but that was one of the weapons I wanted to work towards quite early. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I completely agree with you there. I'm actually planning on trying to get one of those healing stun weapons for my Diego in the future, just because I use him as a lead. And as you mentioned, uh, self-sustaining tune is very effective, especially when um, offensive tunes obviously have a lot less HP and defense than defensive tunes. So again, another question for you guys, which trait do you think got the best tier four third slot updates? That's things like elusive impair, stun on attack with heal, those sort of things. Which trait do you think got the best upgrade? And have you managed to craft any of these upgrades yet? Please do tell us in the comments. Okay, moving on to the five star weapon possibility now. You can obviously upgrade a four star weapon to five stars for 50,000 armory tokens. It also costs 10,000 armory tokens to do one of the tier four four slot obviously a new four slot coming into a weapon as well armory tokens are going to be a massive issue within the five star weapons you already have to use four thousand armory tokens on the new upgrades for tier three so what, what what's your idea of, of five star weapons overall forget the armory tokens so much but just is it just more overwhelming like you said it's just too much too soon i think it's overpowering like um there's a few very specific upgrades that are absolutely fantastic and there are also a few that just don't hit me with that wow factor for being a you know an additional effect um in the fourth slot um i think that there's a lot of different options here and there's a lot of good options as well as a lot of bad options and it's sometimes difficult to decipher what works for you especially with just some of the descriptions about some of these new effects i think it should be more detailed and clearer it's a little convoluted with how some of them work. Like an example would be, if we take a look at team player level four epic effects and we go to the alert crit buff. So alert buffs, at the start of each turn, all teammates get 10% defense for one turn for each alert teammate on the team. Now this to me seems like, you know, the buffs should stack because if I have five red tunes on defense and each of them have this weapon, I would guess that my team would have you know a really high defense but really the maximum you're going to get is at 40 to 50 percent because if i have it on two different tunes it doesn't add and that to me is very difficult to understand and it doesn't really say that um, in the description either in the armory or on the forums and what's worse about that is that that's a heavy investment you know that's ten thousand to try and go for that if you get it multiple times you think you've you know, won a lottery there, especially if you haven't had to spend that many, but you actually, you haven't got that big a gain. So yeah, I think being able to test out some of these, I mean, there, is, there isn't really a sandbox mode in the game, so we can't really see how a lot of these things work. There is a beta, but yeah, I mean, not everyone's in the beta, not everyone's gonna spend the time to test this stuff out, but I agree. I think it should just have in brackets, you know, up to 50% max or something like that. So you know what the maximum amount of percentage here would be. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Because like when we take a look at the team player one for tough crit, where up to two teammates get 5% bonus HP per turn for each tough teammate on the team, this one does stack. So although it's bonus HP, it might not seem very efficient. At the same time, like considering the alert crit and tough crit do not work the same way, it just becomes more confusing for the player, I find. 
And as you mentioned before about how many armory tokens it takes for a single craft, then we have to think also about the varnish. And we also have to think about the armory tokens that are needed to reset the weapon when you get the wrong crit or just a normal success. Of the new four slot tier four upgrades, which ones do you think are the most powerful? Kind of like what we talked about with the new third slot tier four upgrades. Which one do you think are the most powerful and do you have any of them already? Well, the most powerful fourth slot that I think is out there right now is Rampage. It is just complete destruction when you have it. Um, I actually did get it just before WOC. And what Rampage does is off of a basic attack, if it's a critical hit, it'll hit two additional enemies for 150% damage, which is equivalent to the slot three, tier three um, double attack blue weapon. So this is just super effective in my opinion because there are lots of ways to increase your tune's critical hit chance, either by the leader, by the mods, or with another ability that I actually just crafted this morning, which is a team player effect. And that would be the 15% attack and is it 35 crit to all adjacent teammates? I have been, I've looked at that in myself and I definitely want that. Yes, absolutely. That's the exact one I'm talking about. Um, it's actually on my Diego stun weapon at the moment. I think this is a great thing to craft, especially on your leader tune, because every other tune is adjacent to that tune, meaning everyone gets that 15% attack and that plus 35 crit chance. So other than Rampage, are there any other four slot upgrades that kind of stick out to you? It doesn't necessarily have to be the trait crits, you know, the top, top deal. There are some lower ones that actually seem pretty decent as well. Yep. So a couple of the other ones that I like. So Destruction level four, the Universal uh, two, I believe. So it's increased rush damage by 10%. This to me is perfect for a tune like Arav who once he starts to rush, he doesn't really stop rushing. So by increasing the amount of damage that he does, obviously with his follow-up ability, he has a much larger killing potential. The destruction alert crit, so the slow attack when dealing a critical hit, causing a 33% slow for three turns to that enemy, that to me is really effective because you're applying a high amount of damage because you're assuming a critical hit occurs and then you're also preventing the enemy from being able to rush right away. So another ability that I really like is resistance level four effects. I like the ability Stonewall, which is a strong crit. So this character's defense cannot be reduced. So this is really like taking the place of a mod because you can have a mod or there's some rushes as well as active skills that can prevent a character's defense from being reduced. But I think this could be very effective on a defensive team because now you can just load them up on HP, for example, as well as defense without worrying about a tune like Diego coming along and cutting that defense in half or even more. Yeah, I agree. I, I do like that that uh, Stonewall one. It just like you say, you can you don't have to raise the defense as high, knowing it will never be reduced. is a, is a nice sort of. Uh, Nice, nice thing to have, especially on, I think, what will become a bit more of a widespread defense team in the future, like the Lao Po teams, because we're seeing a, a few more strong characters come out now. But the ones that stick out to me, I really like the critical one. It's in the same one with the 10% boost to rushes, but it's the top, top reward, which would be 100% crit rate. Instantly, I'm just like, on certain characters now, but in the future, like I have Heng Yen, that would work so well on him. Uh, even some six star characters, for instance, like Harper, 100% crit rate means you are hitting disarms every single time. This is a really nice upgrade. Another one that stuck out to me uh, is the Strong Destruction Level 4, and it has Ransack, and it's a 100% chance. There's not even like a small chance of this. It's a 100% chance that attacks still two positive effects from the enemy you attack. This just seems really good on a defense team for me because you're basically debuffing the enemy and buffing yourself with their buffs and it steals everything like elusive attack buffs it just seems really nice i think it may even still heals i'm not 100 percent sure if it stills heals over time but it definitely stills elusive because i've had it happen to me i was just like where did my elusive go and it was stolen by the enemy yeah for sure there are some really great abilities here and i would love to try them all out in gameplay as i'm sure you would as well because then um, we could get a better understanding of what some of these abilities do and what we should be working towards. 
So while those are some of the best ones or some of the ones we like the most, are there any that stick out to you that either you don't think work properly or just just a terrible shouldn't be there? Anything that sticks out to you like that? The first one that sticks out to me for one that should just not exist in my opinion is Destruction Level 4 Epic Effects Universal Crit 2. When attacking, increase attack by 200% of his character's crit stat. Now, this to me, on first reading it, sounds really good because you're thinking you're going to be getting this massive buff to your overall damage, but really the only amount of additional attack and damage you're going to get is two times whatever your crit chance is, but flat damage. In many cases, tunes have a flat crit chance of 10, so if you don't add any crit mods or a crit leader or have a way to boost like adjacent tunes crit chance, this is going to be 20 additional damage. Not 20%, just 20 flat damage, like when you think of bleed, burn, or maim. Which is terrible, obviously, and f literally 5% increase in attack stat would do so much more on the majority's S-classes. The base attack is so high. Do you think that was just, do you think that's just bad? Or do you think that needs to be kind of looked at like it doesn't actually work how they kind of wanted it to work? Now, I feel like they had a good idea, but they didn't know how to implement it. I do think that this should be looked at because this cannot be the outcome that they wanted for it. I feel like it should be based off of crit damage. Like, um, so increase attack by 200% of this character's crit stat. If it was multiplying the crit chance by two and adding that to the damage, so the crit damage, so if you had a critical attack, I think that would make a lot more sense and it wouldn't be too overpowered either. Quite like a crit multiplier mod set or a crit multiplier mod itself, just increasing the amount of damage up that comes from hitting a critical attack. Absolutely, exactly that. I think the one you highlighted is definitely the worst in there. Hopefully it gets sort of looked at and tweaked a little bit. Another one I noticed, is it within strong resistance tier four and it's the one below Stonewall and when taking a critical hit, get 55 crit for two turns. And that's doesn't seem very, very much in terms of resistance to me. It's actually like an attack buff that's generally gonna go on a defensive character. It just seems kind of odd. I mean, if you've got like a 10% heal to self or something when taking critical damage or something like that, or a defense buff, but a crit buff, just, it seems really out of place within resistance. Yeah, I completely agree with you. It seems to be in the wrong location like I would have thought this would be in destruction or even amplification in a way because you know you're giving yourself a chance to apply a lot of damage on your next turn. There's another one that's quite similar to that actually this just reminded me if you go to amplification level 4 for tough characters where you get rampage which a lot of people are going for it's obviously very offensive just two below that it says for each 10% of max AP this character receives 4% less damage from basic attacks. That seems quite more of a, I don't know. Some of them just seem very out of place. Like it looks like because before for the old third slot upgrades, it was three possible outcomes. There was a global, there was like a melee or a ranged version. And then there was the trait crit. Whereas this one, it's like now there's an extra one. It, maybe they put in that extra one a bit late and it was kind of seems like there's one that just it seems kind of out of place or just not very good at all. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. So those are the things that we think are bad and we think need to be probably improved. We did talk about our favorite ones within the four slot upgrades. Do you think any of them need to be balanced? Do you think maybe any of them are too powerful versus the other ones in there? You know, we didn't have a beta really for the outcomes and it was instantly live. So what, what are your thoughts on some of the more powerful upgrades within that four slot? Well, I'm gonna jump right into Rampage again. I think Rampage is way too overpowered. As soon as you put double attack on a Rampage weapon, then like, and you put it on a tune like Priya, she goes from attack, you know, a normal three times, maybe six times with a double attack weapon to having a chance to attack 18 times with a double attack and a rampage. And that to me is just way too much power and it completely imbalances the game. You don't need skill in order to use this weapon. And I found that myself in WOC, I was relying on rampage quite a bit because whenever it went off, the match was suddenly over. Like I thought I had two or three more turns to go and all of a sudden, 
Rampage kills everyone. And on the flip of a sword, I guess, it would also kill me if it was on any defense team. Yeah, I agree. I've had Rampage for a week and it is extremely powerful. But just the basic attacks, forget about the rushes. I've one shot three characters with a double attack Rampage on multiple occasions, especially trait damage. It's insane, the amount of damage output that you can get with Rampage is too much with just one as well. And there are people running around, around with much more than one Rampage weapon. So this has been definitely a talking point on the forums and I'm guess like I'm guessing between top members of the top factions in terms of what you think should happen with Rampage. Do you think it's something that they should revisit and maybe balance a little bit? Or more than likely what's going to happen is just something else is going to come out to make it weaker because something else more strong is going to come out. What, what, what are your feelings over the future of Rampage and the implications it may have being this powerful? I do not see them um, reducing Rampage's effect. I do predict that something is going to come out, whether it's a specific type of mod, a new type of weapon, a new tune, just some new ability that will end up kind of neutering Rampage a bit. Now, do I know when that'll happen? No, but it has to be on the forefront of um, Scopely's mind, in my opinion, because Rampage is right now completely like overturning the game in some places in my opinion so i agree i think rampage is very strong there's definitely going to be something that comes out that's either stronger or makes it not as powerful i do agree also i don't think it's going to be balanced i think it should i think it would be much better if we had a mentality in the game where if things are too overpowered or too powerful balance should come in it happens in other games it happens in very competitive games and rts is one of those games that wants to see itself as a very competitive game so to remain that competitive game balance is very important now that is pretty much going to be the end of the episode however is there anything you want to just touch on as a closing point or a closing statement at all with the armory upgrades well aside from the upgrades itself i really like the upgrade to the actual inventory area of armory how now we can search out specific weapons without having to scroll through hundreds if not thousands of weapons and that's kind of something i would like to see for our characters and our tunes as well um, I find it to be really useful when I can find exactly what I want to craft on and it just saves me time and makes it a lot easier. Oh for sure, when it comes to characters I just want to have the ability to just favourite a character so it goes to the top so then I, I can level up that character, something like that. Something else that came with the armory update that was nice is the disassemble screen, being able to just select one and two stars. It's from the same sort of search panel that's in the inventory but you can select the first 100. It's just so quick now, rather than having to long press loads of different things. Some of the quality of life updates that came with that Armory update were really, really good. So last question for you guys, do you think they should go back and balance some of these underpowered and overpowered updates to the four slot in the Armory? This means Rampage, which we have talked about, and also the crit buff, which Link highlighted. Do you think these need to be reworked a little bit? Again, if you have any ideas, please leave a comment below. So that's the end of this episode. I wanted to give you a big thanks for joining me on this one, Link. Thank you so much for having me, Lockdown. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episodes. Any future episodes of The Road will be posted on my Discord and my YouTube, my Twitter, everywhere, basically. As we do come to the end of The Road this time, see you next time, guys. And as always... Keep on surviving guys, keep on surviving.